Hey guys, Tyler here. The Na'vi are a sapient humanoid race from James Cameron's Avatar. They are native to the lush jungle moon Pandora, which orbits a gas giant, Polyphemus, in the Alpha Centauri system. Externally, Na'vi have striped blue skin, large cat-like eyes, and long sweeping tails. Na'vi bodies are slenderer than humans, being on average 3 meters, or 10 feet tall, thanks to Pandora's 0.8g surface gravity. As of 2154, they are the only known intelligent extraterrestrial civilization in the Avatar universe. While the Na'vi appear to be hunter-gatherers with technology equivalent to Earth's Paleolithic, they indeed have a sophisticated culture based on a spiritual connection to other life on Pandora. In this video, I'd like to examine the biology, history, and culture of the Na'vi and compare them to our expectations about aliens in real life. Let's get started. Pandora, named after the first human woman in Greek mythology, is the fifth moon of the Saturn-sized Polyphemus, the second of three gas giants orbiting the sun-like star Alpha Centauri A. Pandora, which is actually one of multiple habitable moons orbiting Polyphemus, is about 72% as massive and 75% as voluminous as Earth. Navi clans populate various Earth-like biomes on Pandora, including deserts, icy tundra, tropical reefs, wetlands, and mountainous areas, among others. Some even live in tremendously large ancient trees called rocher, Oh wait, that's uh, that's not right. Kelotrol, or home tree. As far as their physiology, Navi's skin ranges from a greenish cyan and turquoise to deep blues, found in jungle faring Navi. The color is the result of a cyanin pigment that can tan to dark purple after prolonged UV exposure. Bioluminescent markings resembling freckles also appear to follow along the circulatory and nervous systems, and can change color based on mood though it's unknown if this is conscious or simply reflexive. Despite their blue skin, Na'vi do in fact have red blood, which utilizes an iron-based compound roughly equivalent to hemoglobin. The Na'vi also possess some feline features, including pointed, flexible ears, triangular faces, and flat, bifurcated noses framed by large yellow or blue eyes adapted for night vision. They have four fingers on each hand and foot, including their thumbs and big toes, though Navi human hybrid avatars have five fingers on each hand. Navi sexual dimorphism is roughly equivalent to that of humans. Their dentition is also similar to ours, though they have more pronounced canines. Navi hair is naturally braided into a neural whip called a Q, and they seem to have no other body hair that we know of on screen, except for eyelashes and bobs of fur at the end of their tails. These cues are actually an extension of the Navi nervous system and appear in other wildlife on Pandora as well, allowing multiple creatures to link up and share emotions, memories, and sensory input. Okay, so save for that last fact, pretty much everything that I've stated so far is pretty straightforward from an evolutionary biology standpoint. But there are quite a few other details of Navi biology that distinctly separate them from familiar animal lineages on Earth, since, you know, after all, they are aliens. For instance, they breathe a different mixture of gases in Pandora's atmosphere. Another reason for the existence of the avatars, as humans living on Pandora cannot breathe its atmosphere without special masks called exopacks. As on Earth, the moon's atmosphere is a familiar mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane, just in different concentrations. But it also contains a significant amount of more exotic gases, such as xenon, ammonia, and hydrogen sulfide. 
Pandora's atmosphere is about 20% denser than Earth's, primarily due to the high amount of xenon, a heavy, colorless, odorless, and generally unreactive noble gas. The Navi possess unique organs analogous to kidneys, called Wicho, that developed specifically to take advantage of the local atmosphere, by extracting from it greater amounts of oxygen for the Navi bloodstream to power their internal organs and their superhuman musculature. Pandora's denser atmosphere also also means that more force is required to accelerate through it. Navi compensate for this loss of friction, as well as the reduced gravity, by curling their large toes into the soft ground while running. The Pandoran day-night cycle is also different from Earth's, as Alpha Centauri is a binary system, so Pandoran nights are more like dusk. This would presumably have a significant effect on Navi circadian rhythms. Navi cells do not use nucleic acids to store genetic information, meaning their genetic makeup is not considered DNA, and they likely do not use RNA to synthesize proteins either. While this sounds quite unusual, in fact, within the past few years, researchers using computer models have uncovered more than one million alternatives to DNA, each of which uses different chemical compounds to store hereditary information. This has enormous implications for exobiology throughout the cosmos, and even the possible presence of a shadow biosphere on Earth that uses radically different biochemical and molecular processes than known life. Despite this, Navi biochemistry is still carbon-based, which is largely to be expected throughout the universe due to carbon's ability to form a wide variety of molecular bonds. And the Navi skeleton is reinforced with a naturally occurring carbon fiber, not unlike how Wolverine's skeleton is reinforced with adamantium. What's also interesting to note is that the Navi are fundamentally different in many ways to other large Pandoran animals. They have four limbs and use two legs for locomotion, classifying them as bipedal tetrapods. While most Pandoran animals have six limbs or wings for locomotion, meaning they're hexapods. Most other Pandoran life also has two pairs of eyes, rather than one pair. A primary set, which sees in full color in mostly the same spectrum as human vision, and a smaller secondary set, which sees in the near-infrared, coming in handy particularly at night. Additionally, these secondary eyes are also highly sensitive to motion, acting as an early warning system or as locators to spot a faraway prey. Furthermore, most Pandoran fauna, as opposed to the Navi's more traditional noses, have breathing holes at the root of their necks, connected to the trachea and much closer to the lungs, often controlling the induction of air with similar cartilaginous flaps to uh, sharks and rays on Earth. Further still, most have two cues extending from the back of their heads, while Navi only have one. Superficially, it would at first appear that the Navi diverged very, very long ago from the rest of the Pandoran phylogenic tree. However, there's the lemur-like animal called the Prolemurus, which bears a closer resemblance to the Navi than other Pandoran animals thanks to its transitional anatomical characteristics. The two-eyed prolemuri, who sport nostrils both on their snouts and closer to their breastbones, have forelimbs that are partially fused and split at the elbow, meaning they likely experienced a form of limb fusion during their evolutionary history, and the Navi did as well to an even further extent. This would strongly indicate that the Navi's ancestors branched out from the phylogenic tree just a few million years ago and not eons ago. On the one hand, this limb fusion may seem like a step backwards, as logically hexapods would have more dexterity than us humans, while also having better balance due to having more points of anchorage. But on the other hand, the limb fusion could be argued to function as a biological cost-saving measure, since energy would need to be provided to fewer muscles. In other words, sometimes less is more, 
or at least enough. As with many other quirks of evolution, there is no such thing as an optimal strategy for survival, just whatever works best in the moment. I won't relay every single known fact about Na'vi, society, and culture during the remainder of this video, though I will hit some of the highlights before posing the question of how plausible the Na'vi are. The Na'vi have an egalitarian society built around hunting, foraging, and handicraft. They are united in their worship of Iwa, a personification of Pandora's interconnected biosphere. The Na'vi perceive Iwa as a protector, among other things, and strive to live in perfect harmony with their environment, only taking resources deemed necessary for survival. Each Na'vi clan has its own subculture with rich art, history, music, and dress, but their religion connects all Na'vi on the moon. Although the mechanics of Na'vi reproduction are similar to that of humans, the Na'vi's unique physiology offers a level of intimacy unknown on Earth. We see this in Avatar with the intertwining of cues, an act that, while not in and of itself geared towards reproduction, is highly erotic and deeply spiritual. Broadly speaking, the Na'vi's Paleolithic lifestyle is a choice made to protect their ecological harmony. Roles in Na'vi society are not divided along gender lines, and each Na'vi has a responsibility to the well-being of their clan. War is rare among Na'vi as they strive to minimize unnecessary death and bloodshed, with most conflicts resolved through mediation. They do, however, practice ritual combat in certain cases. Overall, this kind of communal, egalitarian, peaceful social arrangement was the norm among pre-agricultural societies on Earth. Combined with the faster spread of disease, lower nutritional value, and rise of greed, after the invention of agriculture, some radical theorists have put forth the argument that it's the worst decision our species has ever made. Now, mind you, I think that the creation of a technological society predicated on some form of centralization of authority and resources has been a largely positive development for humanity, and agriculture has allowed us to sustain a much larger population, among other things. But just as with everything else in life, it is about trade-offs. I talk about this more in my video about the Herogen from Star Trek, which you can check out right now, link in the description. So, how plausible are the Na'vi? Well, they do possess a number of characteristics that may seem too convergent for a truly alien species. But the Na'vi's alternative biochemistry and various other aspects of their biology are a nice touch, in my opinion, and prove that the creative minds behind Avatar did do a lot of their homework when it comes to how an alien's biology would be influenced by its environment. With that, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads, and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you next time. Thank you.